start with the basic E minor scale. We're gonna build on this thing, and again, I think this is gonna really help you kind of connect the dots and just learn your fretboard better when you're playing within certain keys. So this is the E minor scale here, and I'll throw the notes up on the screen. What this means is that you can play any of those notes within the key of E minor. So if you've got a song that's in the key of E minor, no matter what other chords are in there, as long as it's in that key of E minor, those notes will naturally fit. Now, I'll say this a lot throughout this video, this does not mean it's a rule, okay? It does not mean that, okay, well, this song's in the key of E minor or whatever, so I have to play those notes. No, that's not the case at all. All this is designed to do is just to help you know where those notes are on the fretboard within that key so that you have that as a go-to at any given moment. And this will help you improvise, it'll help you write and so forth. Now, the cool thing is, uh, you may know this scale already, but you may play it a little bit differently like this. <laughs> instead of, again, the way I played it. Knowing both ways just gives you more options, right? So now, not only do I know the notes that I was playing earlier, right? I know these other notes, which have more open strings, you know, using the A and the D strings. So I've got those as options too now. I know where those are. Now the cool thing about the E minor scale and really like any scale is you can just continue playing that. So you, you basically end where you start, right? So let's play through. Let's just continue this on. Now the goal would be to find out where those notes are throughout the rest of your fretboard here. So let's play let's play the E power chord, and we're about to get into power chords in a second. Let's play the E power chord on the A and the D strings, okay? So instead of this... So now we know these notes right here fit, okay, into the key of E minor. We just know uh, a different place on the fingerboard, right, on the fretboard, where those notes exist. And now you can just start tying these pieces together. You can start with that E anywhere you want, right? Well, let's just continue that like we did up here. Let's do that real quick. <laughs> And of course, you know all of the open strings, your open notes here, where they start over at your 12th fret. So as you become extremely familiar with this part of your fingerboard, you by default know this part too, because everything starts over here. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool way to go about it. So in other words, we played this, right? <laughs> Okay, pretty easy. And then you can continue that all throughout the fingerboard there. So it's not so much about playing the scale. I will say this, I think the last thing, or at least the last thing that I want is to play a riff or write a riff or write a guitar solo that just sounds like I'm practicing scales. I don't wanna do that, that would be kind of boring, right? Well, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but before we get to that part, let's go over the power chords that fit into the key of E minor. They're very similar to the notes that we just went over. I mean, they're practically the same except for one. So we have an F sharp note in the, the scale, the E minor scale, right? But power chords, remember power chords are your first and your fifth note. Those two notes make up the power chord. So example, if our first note, our root note, okay, is an E, because we're playing in the key of E minor here, well, what would our fifth note be? Just count up, okay? Okay. 
there's your power cord and that's the same for all power cords the issue we have with the f sharp power cord well is this <laughs> So the fifth note of the F sharp power chord, that doesn't fit into the key of E minor. Now, I wanna make a very important point. It doesn't matter if it fits or not. If you wanna play that power chord with your other power chords within the key of E minor, you're free to do that. Please remember that these are not rules, okay? And I, I can't stress that enough. Just because that doesn't fit into the key of E minor doesn't mean you can't play it. So I don't want you to get boxed in. And this is what this is what some people that are that I don't want to say afraid of learning theory. They just don't really want to dive that deep into it. I, I get it. I think this is one of the things they're afraid of. Well, the music theory says it should be played this way to be in the key of E minor, okay? Don't put yourself in that little box. Allow yourself the freedom to expand beyond that. And rather, what I really want to do here is, is give you some things that you might already know, like in your playing, and how maybe you want to tie that back to the theory side of things, as opposed to, hey, I've got the theory, now I've got to tie my playing to that theory. I don't want you to think like that. Please don't, because then you're kind of, you're kind of boxing yourself in to some degree. Some people may or may not agree with that. Again, it's just the way I think, and I hope this presentation is helping you. That's the ultimate goal, okay? So let's talk about this power chord, this F-sharp power chord. So you can change the second note of the power chord, and you've probably seen my videos on variations of power chords. In fact, a lot of my riff lessons that I have on my YouTube channel, and I always post a lesson, by the way, on the first and third Saturday of the month. Uh, so you'll know that I'm a big fan of not just playing the power chord all the time, but changing that fifth note to maybe a third note, maybe another note, okay? Changing that next note of the power chord to something else. So what do we do in this case, or what can we do? This is not right or wrong, it's just something that you can, okay? What I like to do is play, instead of the F sharp power chord, is play an F sharp over D. So I'm gonna move my pinky finger here up to the fifth fret. Now we know that D note there, we know that's within the key of E minor, so it fits. So listen to this real quick. Okay, so that's our only change that we're gonna to make to the power chords within the key of E minor here, okay? So how I would play the series of power chords, if I were playing the power chords like the scale that we played would be something like this. Now, remember, you can change that next note of the power chord. So what we did with the F sharp, you can actually play around with some other notes. Like what if we instead played the fifth fret of, you know, that D note, the fifth fret of the A string, which is a D. What if we just, what if we played that open? Like, because we know A is in there, right? What would that sound like? <laughs> sounds pretty cool to me or we also know that the B note a string second fret is within our E, e minor almost E major E minor scale there so it would go like this <laughs> Okay, that might sound a little funny, but I mean, you can make it work. Again, there are no right or wrong answers here. It's only what works best for you. It's only what sounds good to you as you're writing your music here. So 
again, we talked about changing the second note. Well, we can essentially use that same strategy that we did with the F sharp with the B note too, okay? Now the B power chord works because what is that next note? Okay, that fifth note of the B power chord is an F sharp. So that works, but the note right next to it, right up from that, which is a G. So I'm gonna move my pinky up kind of a little stretchy poo there with the fingers, right? So now we have a B over G. So you get the same effect, right? So you could play the power chord progression. And again, I'm just gonna play this like the skill. You could use those variations, right? With changing the second note of the power chord, the fifth note, okay, your root note, your fifth note, that's the next note you play, we can still change that around even more. We can use different variations. And this is where knowing just the basic notes, okay, within that key, within that progression there, this is, this is how that can help you. Because now I know what to change that to. Again, it's not a rule, okay? This is just kind of a guide. It's not a rule. You could, you could, you know, play some stuff that doesn't even fit in this key. In fact, when you get into more obscure styles of metal and, and really music in general, well, that's what you're going to find. And of course, there are theory-based names for all this. But again, I don't, I don't think about the theory behind it. I don't think, well, I need to, you know, according to the theory here, I need to play this exotic piece. I don't think about that at all. I hear stuff up here and I try my best to translate that to the fretboard. That's just how I do things. That doesn't make my way the right way. It just makes it right for me, okay? So some people want to look at the theory piece to, to write their music, and that's, that's right for them, okay? There's no right or wrong here, so please understand that, and then don't let anybody tell you otherwise, okay? We all learn a little different. So in any case, we're gonna change some of the notes, some of the, uh, the fifth notes of the power chords, and I'm gonna just base it on what I know from the E minor scale that fits within that scale. So just kind of watch and just, just hear how this pans out, okay? I did and I, you know, I made that up guys I, that's not a particular song I just wanted to move again that next note of the power chord to another note that I know what fits into that scale again it doesn't have to fit you could you could play something that doesn't that's not in that scale okay for that key of E minor <laughs> Now let's go back to the single notes, the notes within the scale, and let's talk about riffs. So you can use these notes, now that we know where they're at, all over the fretboard, right? Uh, we can use these notes to make some really cool riffs. So you don't have to play the scale, and this is where we start to get creative. We start branching out from the scale itself and use the scale to our advantage. Since now we know where the notes are, we can just like... <laughs> Thank you. 
you can start mixing single notes in with power chords and just coming up with all kind of stuff. Uh, once again, you don't have to play the notes within the key. You can venture outside of that. The goal is just know where the notes are on your fingerboard that do fit within that key so that you can you can play with purpose. You don't have to think about it. It's like, okay, I know we're in the key of E minor. I've got this, you know, let's let's write some riffs, right? So let's do something else down here. <laughs> Again, guys, I'm just making up stuff. Just want to share examples of what you can do uh, with the knowledge of the E minor skill without playing the skill. Now, before we go to the lead guitar part, the solos, I want to cover something called harmonies here, harmonizing riffs. Of course, you can do the same thing with leads as well, but we're going to harmonize riffs. And this is actually why I made the video. I put out a video uh, about a week or so ago on metal harmonies, right? Learning the melody, but then learning the harmony to that melody. Well, here's how I come up with it. And I kind of briefly explained in that video, but I, I'd asked if you guys wanted me to go deeper into something like this right here. So I do hope this is helping. Uh, so my easy go-to for this method is to play the third note of the core note, okay? So if I'm starting out, I'm in the key of E minor, right? We're, we're in the key of E minor this whole time. And if my first note is an E note, well, what's my third note? You've got E, you've got F sharp, then you've got G. So if one guitar is playing an E, then the next guitar is going to play what? A G, right? Now, if that next note of my core melody, if it goes from E to F sharp to G, just three notes there, then my, my harmony to that would be G. A, B. Okay, so this is my chord riff. If I played the harmony, if we had another guitar player in the room and they were to play the harmony, they would play this. Pretty cool. And you just apply that across the riff. So that's one of the things where like you hear two guitars playing and they're, they're playing the same thing. Uh, and then all of a sudden, one just branches off and starts playing something different and harmonizes. Now, you don't have to use the third note. You could use the fifth note. You can use whatever note. I mean, play around with it. Like, record yourself playing some single note riffs like... Okay, record something like that in your DAW and then open up another track and, and then play around with the second guitar part of that. Now, quick trick, and I'll explain this in, in multiple videos, I always record two rhythm guitars. A hard pan, you know, the main rhythm all the way to the left side, then I'll open a track up and hard pan the other guitar to the right side. And of course, that guitar is what I'll use to sometimes come in and harmonize. I won't do it all the time, I'll just throw it in here and there, sometimes more than others, but it's a pretty cool tactic you can use just to, for your music to sound cool, and it kind of breaks up sometimes the monotony, right? If you if the same riff is going on too long, well, let's throw something else in there. Let's throw a harmonizing part in there so it sounds like it just changes, right? So that's the strategy that you can use. Now let's briefly touch on guitar solos, and really we're just using the same concept. You know, I mean, we know the notes within the key of E minor here. Remember, we played the riff up here. <laughs> the scale, right? I mean, I wouldn't want to play that as a riff. You could. Uh, but again, the last thing we want to do is play riffs and licks that sound like we're just practicing scales. You want to venture outside of that, okay? Um, maybe you have one song based on a riff. Like, what if that was a song? <laughs> Even at the end, I still changed it up a little bit. So again, guys, there's no right or wrong. There's only what's best for you and what sounds good to you. That's all that matters. 
like uh, Hetfield said, nothing else matters. That was a bad pun. All right, so let's go down here to our lead. <laughs> What's cool about solos, and of course you can do this with rhythms as well, is you can take notes and bend them up to that next note, right, that fits within that key. So for example, our B string 15th fret, uh, what do we have here? We have a D note. Well, instead of playing the E, we can bend it. And you can use things like vibrato and string bends to not just play the next note, uh, but you can kind of bend it up to that, which sounds really cool. That's where I believe where your signature style really starts to shine. You start to develop that. It's like, okay, uh, that sounds like John or, or Tom or Susie or whatever. They, they know it's you when you're playing solos because you just have that thing. When Satriani plays a guitar solo, I don't know that it would even matter what amp he's playing through. I mean, as soon as he starts playing, you know it's him. Slash, you know it's him. They have a signature sound, okay? You probably know several guitar players like that. It's really what I want for you. I want you to be able to play guitar, pick up your guitar, and and, and your friends or whoever, they hear your music, it's like, okay, I, I know that's you. <laughs> I can tell it's you, right? Um, my wife, she hears music all the time, and, and of course my friends, and they always know when I'm playing. They, they can hear it. Uh, is is opposed to hearing other guitar players. Of course, everybody has their own unique sound, and I encourage you, develop your own unique style and sound, not someone else's. And this is why I don't, personally, I don't really focus on, I never really focused on playing scales. I learned them, right? I didn't learn all of them, uh, but I just kind of got bored fast with them because I'm, I'm not going to play a skill in a guitar solo. I don't want to play a solo that sounds like I'm just practicing skills. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn skills, so please <laughs> don't take it as that. Again, if, if there's any theory buffs out there, they're probably just hating me right now. It's not the intent. All I'm saying is we all learn differently, okay? Uh, I learned to swim by being thrown into the water. That's how I learned. I could have read a textbook on it and I probably would have drowned, right? I'm not, I'm just, I've never been, you can just say I'm just kind of dumbed down a bit if you want to, that's fine. But I've never learned great by, by the textbook. I need to be thrown into the fire or thrown into the pool. You know, I was thrown in, I came up dog paddling and I figured it out, right? It doesn't make me better, doesn't make me worse, doesn't make me right, doesn't make me wrong. It's, all that stuff you can just throw out the window. The best way to learn is is the best way that you can learn. That's it. All right. So you know we talked about soloing a little bit, and that's really it's really just it. I mean, you can you can pick up the notes within the scale. Again, I'm not saying play the scale everywhere, but it's good to play it and continue it just to know where those notes are. Right. <laughs> Right. Now, what I would want you to start doing after that is, you know, you don't have to continue playing the scale, but just remember where some of those notes, or all of those notes rather, just remember where they're at. So we played this, right? Well, it doesn't mean you have to start there. So all of those notes were notes within the key of E minor. Now, again, you don't have to just stick with that. You can go off the beaten path. Let's just, I don't know, let's make something up. I'm going to throw in a note that's not in the key of E minor, right? Now, in terms of theory, and you may have picked this out, so, so that's actually based on an E harmonic minor, which means there's a D sharp in there instead of the D. I think as you play music, as you play guitar, you do inadvertently pick things up along the way. It's like, oh, okay, I, I know a lot more theory than I thought I did. I'm not so afraid of it anymore. So, you know, if you are one of those that kind of like, oh, theory, no way, man. Uh, just don't be afraid of it. I'm not saying you have to like learn more. I mean, if you want to do it, if you don't, again, it all comes down to how you learn best. And we're all a little different. Remember I said I had to be thrown into the pool. Uh, had I read the textbook on how to swim again, I probably would have drowned. 
I had to be just thrown out there and at me I had to be hands-on I'm not gonna learn by just you know reading theory of, of anything which is probably why I made bad grades in school right any case guys I hope this video does help you leave me any questions um, and if you like the sort of style we're just kind of laid back I didn't do a lot of editing in this video I just kind of you know pulled the guitar out leave me any comments and I hope this helped I really hope this helped you in some way always keep it metal guys and keep playing music.